Hey you folks, welcome to Mox Gaming Channel. In today video we talking about reroll guides, best units, to list that works when it comes to Memento Mori. Honestly, first this game can't be called a game at all in my opinion. Although is the best piece ever created when it comes to being aesthetically beautiful. Let's talk about the reroll guide, best units and tier list, gameplay, mistakes to avoid, and more. Let's jump forward into this first things being is the presence right here. Gonna go here and claim all. I'm gonna show you what stage. You get this app but we're gonna make this really fast so we get the best bits moving forward. So if you go into quest right here I am at 5 to 19 after you beat 1-12. This is when you're going to be unlocking the invoke feature. And what's really important here you can go into the wish list and actually select the units that you want on the board as you wish for them. Best ones being this chica for this element. And then we're going to go ahead and hit set. Actually we can also hit fender right here. We'll do an explanation really quick and then after that we're going to take everyone out and leave only her dot she's gonna be the best healer. And then we're gonna take everyone out over here and we're gonna only leave Cordy she's the best DPS in her section. So in the end you want something like this dot we're gonna go ahead and hit close dot you're gonna do invoke 10 after we've claimed everything and I'm pretty be sure you can do a couple of other things in order to summon more. But this is also a guaranteed SR. Yes. That was a summon animation, and now you know which characters to. So right here is going to be the reroll by Altima JP Frasia being the best healer friend we are being a cooldown reduction healer Cordy DPS Oliveira being a another support style units. If you want to see descriptions you can see here recovery base units buffer style unit attacker base unit and Olivier buffer. And then we can also look at this information right here. The strongest characters you can see if Florence's up top friend rare is also there. Florence being a DPS character. You have Frasia Dot who's a good healer or DPS Oliver Buffer and then which of the funeral flowers. Natasha. You get her at the initial you know start of the game dot we get a free copy of her. But just know Florence is really good because the more attacks she does or the more crits she does, the more attacks she can do. And if there's dodgy you no, know, allies who are dead, then she can deal more attacks and in case you guys are confused out on descriptions, you can always go to details right here which I think is really cool and you can select the overall units and see what their attacks do. Now that we know who are the best units, let's go ahead and jump into the reroll factor. Click the hamburger or right hand corner right here, going to the return to title, hit OK. After that, click the cog, reset game data, hit reset, it reset and there you go. Now you can go through the entire reroll process that don't sign in right there, because you know. Then you lock your account into something which you don't want to do and then you can select the worlds. There's only 4 worlds right now. Honestly speaking, we're not really worried about that. For a reroll ability factor. If you're competitive, pick like the newest server and you'll go about on your way. What you're seeing is what you get is the gameplay. The voice acting for this is Prem I love it. I think this is some good stuff. Unfortunately the music is actually pretty ambient. It's nice. It has a really good vibe to it does have that dark gritty fantasy story to it. Like pretty depressing if you actually listen to what the voice actors say. Like within the first chapter when you're fighting like. Natasha or the free character SR. You get by the way. SR ratings don't really matter. Any character. Can upgrade SR treat tier lists and best units guide as more of oh these are your healers. These are buffers. These are the normal like gameplay units that we're used to. But it's not like you have to follow anything because any unit in this game is the same rarity and they all have the same stats. There's a combination feature where you can raise rarity. So yeah, it's an interesting thing because you saw how the rates said 4.5%. The reason why it's 4.5% or 4.6% is because you're gonna need a lot of dupes. I in order to upgrade characters. It is an AFK idle VIP system dupe intensive game. So if you're looking for something that's not like that, then this is the wrong AFK idle style game. But hey, this is a new game, so you can play it. And I think it's alright for what it has to offer. I just don't think it's gonna be something that everyone can get behind because there's so many random features in this. It should have had non AFK idle stuff to it, just because the voice acting is actually pretty decent. The soundtrack is these. I said that already, but I saw this on Reddit, where they said it was a crime of a gotcha game. To put something out of this quality and make it essentially concol or an auto idle MMORPG, whatever you want to call it. Because this is a lot better. Better than it should be. The UI is pristine. It is so straightforward. Everything is snappy. 
There's no loading screens or barely any loading screens that I want to love this game that I really do. But everything about this game with the VIP systems look, you can set the way towns look and stuff, which I think is kind of cute in its own quirky way. There's so many things in this game where it's just so easy to recommend but at the same time, there's no way that I would recommend this game to anyone. If I like them because of the VIP system and all the things that you have to go through it.by the way. We're leveling everyone up. That way we can get through this as fast as possible. You don't have to claim that hit challenge. But at the end of the day, what does this come down to? This game is held down by the phone sort of stereotypical game genre where you have to have VIP. You have to have some sort of monetization. So that they can live and breathe in the market. But at the same time the waifus are cute enough so that you can actually play it. Don't get me wrong if this came out 2015. I think this game would be like getting stars of approval one of the best gacha games ever. But because there are so many games like this, it is not worth. You know, play long term. I think this is a great short term game and it's good to hold us over until Nikkei releases. But outside of that there's really like what you see is what you get here. I'll talk about the good points on this game when the waifus is. They all look unique. They have a very distinct personality. Like yes, all of them are going through their stuff. Like you know. Their parents might not be alive or something or they're going through an existential crisis. Because all of their friends. Are gone dot it's like your dark fantasy trope. Right. They aren't like too one dimensional where it's like, Oh, I'm just depressed because everyone's dead dot no. They're trying to, you know. Save something dot they're trying to have some sort of remittance with the characters you interact with and the cutscenes in this game they live 2D. Which is it's so weird. This game could have been so lazy with everything like they could have done the cookie cutter UI. They could have. They could have skipped so many corners. There are so many things that they just didn't have to do. But they did it like this art style is so unique. The fact that it seems like whoever made this game actually tried because getting a UI like this dot clean and crisp and this fast to load even on an emulator dot by why the way. A lot of my emulators haven't been working lately. And this is like one of the fee that's been doing really well, you know. Blue stacks link in description dot it's not sponsored but it supports the channel dot if you click it and all that stuff. But this game's breathes potential dot it has everything about it where it could just be a rising star. A success dot if it wasn't for the monetization dot if it wasn't for the blitz in fact that there is practically zero gameplay. The only thing that you get a kick out of this. What you're seeing is what you get is the gameplay. Is its random red dot simulator and you get dopamine boosts once you get a particular stage. Yes, you definitely play it for those factors. But outside of that, yeah, not much else to it dot it's so easy to reroll. Did I mention that it's super easy to get the best units in the game? The rates are ridiculous high. I think this is just a fun game for the next couple of days and maybe you play Marvel Snap. Maybe you play Genshin if you play something as we wait for Decay. This is what this game does. Difficulty dot I would say zero because once you get to a certain part of this stage, you might be able to carfunkle dot a couple of units where you get through certain stat bonuses up. Like someone like Florence is really good because she can do like practically unlimited attacks. Depending on the pacing and stuff. Yeah. Which of Khalifa or Natasha that I called her. And you're just gonna go ahead and begin the battle and once you complete this, you're gonna be done with the real world process. For the most part, the reroll is not that bad. You can technically cut it down to 5 minutes with how long I've been rambling about the game. Because once you complete this stage, if you can complete this stage defending out fast, you upgrade and put gear on units don't go past level 10. Because if you go past level 10, then you use the currency that's permanently within the game. But at the same time you can re-get it. Over time because of how long you've been playing the game. If you want to make min-max and all that stuff like you're re-rolling for this game. You're min-max ing right. So now we're at the 2 to 1 area and we can go through the process. You know it's gonna be like. You unlocked invoke feature. By the way. You can't select the wish on this section so you get whatever random one. And you can actually get more than one SR on the summit. So if you want to be like really gung-ho about it, technically speaking, you could get a bunch of dupes. You could get like 5 SRS. I've gotten 2 SR on Simon. I think it's really notable if you can get like maybe 3 and then right here we're brought to the home menu. It's gonna be like hey you got a new unit stuff, you can get your missions right here. Very standard tried and true gotcha games. A little back in the boss battle right here. It's me telling us to use a unit and the SSR units in this game.
They're broken, bro. Like, why are they this strong? Dot, I have no idea. Everyone's level 10. This one's like level 1, 18,000 HP more HP than everyone else, and third damage is bonkers. But it is what, it is so rare it like trumps levels in some ways in this game. But I'm sure he could use low rarity just to get by. At the first couple of stages. Because that's how usually like these AFK idle games go. And then as you go through it, then you can get more stuff. Here's the awaken feature where it's the dupe system. Right. So you can see right here this character. The main chica we got a couple of copies of her too specifically. And now we can awaken and now... You get this cute little animation and heredity goes up. So that's how that works. In case you guys are curious, she still needs two more of these diamond levels. So obviously it's going to take a long time before you can get an SR character. And I like the summon animation where it's like, oh, this is a brand new character. It looks really nice. And then we're gonna go right here, going to set the wish list. We're gonna make it so that, and then this is going to be Olivia and hit close and we're going to check the wish list one more time. Everything's set, we're gonna end both and there you go. I might have cut some stuff out, but for the most part the reroll is like under 10 minutes, in case you wanted to time it and be super efficient with it. So you're the lord. Look kind of unreliable blah blah. I guess this is like the more holistic summon animation for a newer character look. They look great Marty right there. She looks awesome and it's nice how that technically everyone keeps their levels and then there is a reset factor. But it costs like gems and stuff so I don't really recommend it, and all that. But yeah, it's a fun game for what it's worth Frasier. You should be rolling for for healing purposes. Friend rear for cooldown. Just a little bit of a heal cordy is really good for, um, just you know. Being attacker but I would recommend Florence. But she's a green unit Oliver for buffs strongest characters overall. Florence, Fenrir, Frasier, Cordy, Olivier and then you know Calippa Cliff something with Q and then here your overall to list. I'll leave links down in the description. But anyways if you made it this far. In today's video, anyway, I think Memento Mori is a good game. Hampered down by monetization and all the things like that right here. And then here it is the VIP system. I really don't want to show this. But it goes to VIP 15. Which I think is like the standard number. But God knows how much money that is and I don't recommend it for that case. But if you're just doing it free to play for fun, try it. Well, thanks so much for watching this vid, bye.